Welcome back to today's video. Here is the effect we're going to be recreating. This is really, really easy. I'm going to break it down for you, showing you the steps and explaining not only what I'm doing, but why I'm doing it. Do you understand exactly what's going on? So the new skate game came out just a little bit ago and a member of my discord was asking if I could remake this effect. Okay, let's go. Let's jump in. So let's quickly take a look at our reference footage. This is actually straight from the trailer of the skate video and in the background what I'm seeing is kind of a little bit of grunge. You might not be able to see it on the screen, but there is some texture in the black here. It's kind of like old film and then we've got some white kind of film damage as well that's playing through and I'm looking at the background before I'm even looking at the text itself because we're creating the whole thing all together and then we have the period from skate come in kind of like we've got all the letters jumping over it and then it rubber bands back touches the E and then grows and fades to the early access of the game itself which if you want to play I mean you know, play for free, blah, 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 don't care. So this tells me I'm going to need two different elements here. The first one that I'm going to need is obviously the word skate. The second one that I'm going to need is the period. So here's the font I ended up using. It's Nordic Pro Bold. And this is the closest thing that I could find to the skate text itself. Now, obviously, all the magic is going to take place within the text itself. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to build up the background so you can see what kind of canvas we're going to be animating this stuff on. And then we're going to jump into the text itself because we use some pretty cool tech in there. And I want you to be able to dedicate 100% of your focus to all that cool stuff. So first things first, we're going to create our background grunge here. I'm going to bring our blend up here just so that it's very easy to see what we're working with. So in our reference, we have kind of this like black smoke, like film damage kind of effect going on there. Very, very subtle, but it's there. The way we're going to recreate that is by first taking a background node and it's just simple black. What we're going to do then is we're going to get a fast noise node and fast noise is an incredible, incredible node. One of the most versatile nodes you're going to find inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let me know if you want to see a video done on this thing because this guy is insane. Now, fast noise by itself usually looks like this. It has kind of a smoky look to it. When you mess with your controls, you can get some varying effects. You can bring up your seethe rate, which allows movement to take place, right? You've got a couple checkboxes to really change how it feels so that, you know, you could create um, some effects that are kind of like watery and stuff. So, like I said, it's a really, really flexible node. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but for our purposes here, we just need to create some kind of really rough smoke that we can pass off as like a very faint film damage. So what I've done here is I've taken a fast noise, we've brought our detail all the way up, contrast up, and then we've juggled our scale just a little bit here. We brought our seethe rate up. Here's what it ends up looking like. And now a consistent theme for this entire effect here, something that you'll notice is this animation is not super smooth. If I play this through frame by frame, you can see it's a couple frames before each next action or, or each step takes place, right? So we're looking at a kind of stop motion animation. Fortunately, Resolve has a stop motion node. So we've taken our fast noise. We can play that through and we have our stop motion node. We've got our frame repeat on seven. And when I throw that into our viewer, this is what we end up with. And so now it looks like we're getting lag, but really what's happening is we're mimicking that kind of janky stop motion style of animation. If I bring my blend down a little bit, I'm going to leave it up for you guys just so that you can kind of see it a little bit more uh, dramatically. But this is what we are looking at in comparison. Next, of course, we have this kind of film grunge here that you can see if I zoom right on in, we've got some of that. 
And the way that we're going to recreate that is with a film damage node. And with film damage, you get a whole bunch of different properties here. The one we're focused on is the dirt. So we've adjusted our dirt density and size, the blur a little bit. We do not want any of these settings on. This is our film blur, our temperature shift. Now, what does this look like when I have it up? Right, you can see we're making things kind of warmer versus cooler. Same thing with our tint shift. I don't want any of that. I'm keeping both of these at zero and I'm keeping film blur all the way down because I don't want any blur on any part of this composition. One other extra little touch we added with our fast noise was a little bit of film grain, which if I bring my blend up a bit so you can see, there we go. Now you can see we've added in some film grain as well. And I've just brought my opacity all the way up. I brought the size up um, and this doesn't look very good when it's super visible but when i bring the visibility down by a lot and then we zoom right in on here i can turn my film grain on and off and this is the slight difference it makes but that's exactly the kind of difference that we are trying to make to complete this kind of old stop motion kind of style now the text let me bring the film blur all the way down see yeah, this is this is what happens when you have the film blur on just completely destroys any resolution I have. Don't want that. Okay, so for the text itself, our period was very, very easy to do. It just comes on in, rubber bands, jumps over. And this was done very easily by animating our center, which you can find in your layout controls. So our period comes in, rubber bands, jumps right back. Let's take a look at our spline editor. Here we go, it's looking something like this. Our animation starts a little bit more aggressive, slows as it reaches its destination, stops moving completely for a few frames, and then rubber bands right back. That's what we're looking at for the animation itself. Now, as for the text, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. For our text, we had to use something called a modifier. Now, basically, what modifiers do is they allow you to still animate different property values of the information that your nodes have, like size, tracking, all that stuff. But they allow you to affect that information in a slightly different way. For example, there's a modifier called a perturb. And what happens when you add a perturb to something is it will take that value and just kind of grab it and randomize it. So for example here, if I go to modify with and I hit perturb and I just hit play, now you can see my size value is just kind of going crazy and as soon as you add a modifier this modifiers tab becomes active and then you can jump into it and actually adjust how that modifier affects everything so now if i bring the speed all the way up it's going to go kind of crazy and give us a little bit of a uh, almost like it has a mind of its own so quick crash course on modifiers really really interesting the modifier that we're using today is called follower and so with the follower modifier applied onto our text, it's going to allow us to animate our text as we would normally, but we're going to set it up so that it adds a delay with each letter, giving the illusion that as our first letter moves, the second letter follows the first, the third follows the second, and so on, giving us the name follower. So in our timing, you can see I have our range set to character range. Our first character is zero and our last character is five. The order I have here is set to automatic, but if it wasn't, I would set it at left to right. Now you can set these um, different, you know, inside out, outside in. You can randomize them completely or you can decide how you want them yourself. We're gonna leave that alone today a little bit beyond the scope of today's conversation. We have the delay type set to between each character. You can also set it between first and last character, but we have our delay type set to between each character and our delay is five frames. So there's gonna be a five frame delay between the animation of each character. So then in our actual text controls, you can see we could animate the size if we wanted, but what we're after today are our transform controls. And to run through everything right now, this is what we end up with when we launch our animation through from start Finish. So the way this animation starts out is with three simple keyframes. The first one moves each character up and then back down again. So this is what our animation starts out looking like. Each letter just jumps over the period. Easy peasy, nothing to it. 
So we could easily leave our animation here and although it is functional, it doesn't look very pretty. It doesn't have the same personality that our reference does and the reason for that is because we haven't exaggerated the animation at all. You can see in our reference, right before the S goes to jump, it squishes down a little bit, like it's getting ready to jump. The same with the rest of the letters. So they all squish down to jump, and then as they come back down, we're looking at the S right now, there's a little bit more squish again, and they even twist a little bit. We can see some mid-air rotation, and that's something that we want to emulate so that our text animation doesn't look like a piece of hot garbage. So the next thing we did was animate the rotation on the z-axis so when they jump they're leaning just a little bit they're going off balance and then they're coming back down to level as they land and that adds just a little bit of personality to our animation but it doesn't quite complete it it still looks kind of blocky it still looks kind of stiff kind of lifeless and that is where our size properties come in now when i say size animation i'm not talking about just making things bigger and smaller i'm talking specifically about the x and y size individual of each other from our text and this is going to allow us to do something very specific called squash and stretch animation which looks like this and now you can see when i compare these two animations the one on the left looks very blocky and the one on the right actually has a little bit of personality. It looks like each letter is making the conscious decision to move. It looks like it's being affected by the environment around it instead of just being moved within the environment. Let's take a look at how this is done. <clears throat> now, the specifics of squash and stretch animation are a little bit beyond the scope of today's conversation. But the main concept behind it is that when you animate something, you do your best to preserve the volume of that object. Meaning that if a square gets wider, it should get shorter. And if it gets taller, it should get thinner. Thereby preserving the amount of volume it has while still allowing it to move and change within its environment. And so combining our offset with our slight Z rotation and then adding in a little bit of that same squash and stretch animation, that we see in our reference footage, you can see that every letter now has just as much personality as our reference footage. And to top it all off, what we've done with our period here that slowly grows to encapsulate the entire screen with what would be the early access screen is we've simply taken an ellipse, which is just a circle mask, and we've slowly sized it up with the same kind of animation that we see in our reference here. And after we have it animated properly, all we have to do is plug it into the input mask of our merge with our simple mimic background here, and it ends up looking like this. Not bad if I do say so myself. One extra touch that we did was not only adding the stop motion for our fast noise here, but also adding some stop motion for our text, as well as for our ellipse as well, so that every single animation gives off the same kind of stop motion feel. Now, if you're enjoying the video and you're getting some value from behind the scenes breakdowns of effects in DaVinci Resolve, then you might get even more value from going to the link in the description and joining the Discord. Inside, you'll find a growing community of awesome people learning Resolve and having a blast just like yourself. You'll be able to keep up with news on videos and also get notified when new free presets come out. Not only that, you'll also be able to put in your very own requests to see breakdowns of effects that you're interested in on the channel and even live on stream. So what are you waiting for? Tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, click the link in the description, and I'll see you on the inside. This has been another Resolve FX breakdown. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comments below. If there's something else you wanna see, let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for streams, join the Discord for awesome and new and exciting stuff. You also get sneak peeks at what kind of content is coming up. And I'll see you in the next video.